So to get the beef stew started, I'm just dropping the little beef cubes into some seasoned flour. I just seasoned it with salt and pepper. I've got some oil in the pan, and the way to get everything going is just to start browning the meat on all sides. This is shoulder. Shoulder is a great cut for beef stew, so is chuck. If you have a butcher nearby, you can just walk in and talk to them. They often have stew beef all ready to go. Um, and even in a grocery store, you'll probably see packages of beef that is a good cut for stewing, like shoulder or chuck. You, want, you don't want something so small that it disappears, but you don't want something too big that it's too big to cut once or twice or fit on a fork. Just think about that when you cut it. Otherwise, it's fine. It's completely up to you. So we're not going for fully cooked right now. We're just browning on all sides. So just remove the cooked pieces to a plate. You can go right in with your other flour pieces and just work through the batch. So now that all the beef is done, I'm noticing this is what you should see in your pan. This is kind of a dry pan. But you don't know how dry it's gonna be. So in this case, I needed more oil. And now I have my onion. And that can get started. And those brown bits, again, that's all flavor, that's caramelized goodness from the beef and the flour. We're gonna deglaze the pan. I have some red wine, completely optional. I have it left over. Don't go out and buy if you don't drink or don't want to. You can do that with some stock or just some water. You can also do it with an ale or a Guinness if you want to turn this into sort of an Irish stew. It's completely up to you. To season the stew, I'm gonna do a bouquet garni. And what that is, is a combination of thyme, rosemary, and bay leaf in this situation. You can do other woody herbs, but this is what I like the idea of the taste for the beef. I happen to have a leek leaf, the outermost leaf of a leek, which is traditional. If you don't have that though, you can use cheesecloth, um, so don't stress. But all you do is package that up, and then using some kitchen twine, you want to tie this up, and this becomes your little seasoning packet, almost like a tea bag of seasoning. It's going to go into the stew, and then you can fish it out later. And it just keeps everything contained so you don't lose any leaves or stalks in your stew pot. So now I can go in with the wine. Small glass, no need to measure. And get all those nice bits off the bottom of the pan. You want a high heat to start cooking off that alcohol as well. You can start seeing the wine evaporating. And we're gonna let that reduce down so that you're just left with the flavor of the wine, not the alcohol. So now that the wine and the onion have had some time, we're gonna go in with the carrot and the turnip. You can use whatever root veg you want. Carrot is great for the sweetness. And then the turnip, I have one around, it's in season. You can use parsnips, you can do potatoes. And then some tomatoes. I can only find fire roasted. They'll do the trick. Pop the beef back in. Drop our little bouquet garni in. I've just had some beef stock heating up over here. So you don't want to undo all the cooking you've already done. So add your stock hot. That should be the perfect amount. Just to about covering. Give it all a good stir. Get that guy down in there so it starts to infuse. Lid on and have the oven preheated. 325. You want a low and slow oven. You just pop it in. And when everything is nice and tender, it'll be ready to go. So here's the stew about an hour into its oven time. Where the line is now, you want it to be reduced by another half of that at least. You'll know when you think it's done. The turnips will be tender, the carrots will be tender. 
The sauce will be nice and thick and stewy. But I just wanted to give you guys a shot before we lost all the light. That's it, super easy, classic one-pot meal. Enjoy, pop any questions below, and I'll